name is uh, Maximilian Vanetrik and I'm in the lab competition with uh, Jobs for All. Uh, for those who haven't seen the film, could you tell us a little bit about the film? Yes, it's a film about uh, work and it's entirely made with uh, archives from the 50s up until today. And you can see that it's a very intense and playful look at how the concept of work, the question of what is work and how work is organized has evolved over the past 70 years. What was it about the subject that drew you to it and wanted you to make this film? So we were actually asked by the uh, Swedish public television to make a film about work. And when we started thinking about this topic, we figured like, hmm, what is actually the definition of work? And we had a very long interview with a historian that has studied that uh, for all his uh, career. And the more we talked about work and also different concepts like free time, uh, labor, we uh, found out that it's actually you know, kind of complicated. What is the exact definition? It comes a lot from work. The linguistic root of the word work comes from torture and very like hard things um, uh, that must be done. Um, but when we looked at the archives, what we found very interesting is that when you looked at the 50s and 60s, there were a lot of reportages made about how workers can improve their working condition in the factories. Um, but the more you veered into the 80s, 90s, all of that completely disappeared and there was more talk about market, growth, uh, globalization. And so there was a question that kind of arised, is the economy, should, should the economy serve the people or should the people serve the economy? So do we live to work or do we work to live? You mentioned about going through the archive. Can you give us a little insight into the process of going through that and how you approached finding the material that you ultimately used? Yeah. So for us, working with archives was, it was in a way like shooting in the sense that when you are behind your camera and then you feel that, okay, now it's happening. Now I'm sort of capturing what I wanted to capture. Going through the archives was a bit of the same process. You, you look at long reportages made in the, I don't know, 60s or 70s, and then you find that one person who is um, expressing a thought. And usually, you know, there is the content, there is the visuals, and all of that comes together, and you kind of feel like you've hit in this gold nugget. <laughs> we have the thing going on in America at this moment in time, they're calling the Great Resignation. Yeah. And, you know, the whole anti-work movement. And in some ways it's seen as a very modern thing, but it's interesting in the film you have, you know, footage from the 70s of people talking about their dissatisfaction with their work and their lives and the working to live or live to work. It's in a way for some modern audiences that might be surprising that these sort of things are not new. Mm. Was there anything else that not only is it a timely film now, but was there anything that surprised you yourselves when you were going through the archives that you didn't expect to find in attitudes and ideas? Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I think what really surprised us was um, something that kind of on like two different levels, where one level was that when at the interviews we looked at with workers, for example, from the 60s and 70s, they were so well formulated. They were really expressing kind of very complex thoughts and ideas about what their personal opinion uh, was about their workplace and we think that this comes a lot from the fact that back then maybe you know unions were bigger um, people actually talked more about these things together these sorts of places and opportunities existed but also the journalist the TV journalist when they asked a question they actually let the people answer for two or three minutes so these archives we found especially fascinating where you see someone that expresses a full thought for two minutes without interruption, without any cuts. And the more we veered into the modern daytime, well, expressions, thoughts become more fragmented. You hear sound bites, people say something, um, but never really can express, you know, their whole thoughts. So we had to turn to other archives. We also had to turn to YouTube. Uh, and we, there was something pretty interesting from the from the U.S. there, where people 
many people have to juggle not only with two jobs, maybe, maybe even three jobs. And on top of that, they're making vlogs for YouTube where they're talking about their jobs to make some other revenue on YouTube. <laughs> so there's this whole subcategory of images on YouTube where people in between jobs are in their car having lunch, filming themselves, talking about how, how, how it is to have three jobs. Um, yeah, like when you know what you look for on YouTube or in other archives, it really opens up. Um, it's such a fascinating tool to do, you know, sociology or even visual anthropology. Tell us about your experiences with Clermont, as you mentioned the film is playing here in the lab competition. So we had, uh, we've had really great um, experience here, here in Clermont. So me and my colleague, uh, Axel Danielson, we won here in 2017 uh, the special jury prize in the lab and also the audience prize was a short film called 10 Meter Tower. And so this is our second time here and um, yeah, we really hope um, that the audience is going to have a good time with this film, as as good perhaps with <laughs> the other one. This this film is more political um, in its um, message, but the playfulness and the sort of setup is, I would say, very similar to Tamita Tower. That it's it's really trying to be intense, funny. You know, it's a roller coaster ride. Thank you.